Hi, my name is Graham Moore. I'm the author of The Holdout, and this is what I'm reading. The Secret Lives of Color by Cassia St. Clair is a wonderful history about something we all kind of take for granted, colors. It's funny, in my own work, I think the thing I probably spend more time pondering than anything else is how to take familiar genres and familiar settings and tell stories in them from new perspectives, ways in we haven't seen before. And that's what Cassia St. Clair does so brilliantly in this book about things we think we all understand, colors. What she shows is the idea that um, what we call a color, where we define the line between red and purple, where we define the line between blue and green, are not scientific concepts, because these things are all on a spectrum, but rather linguistic and cultural ones. So, for example, one of the things that blew my mind in this book was the idea that language affects how our brains think about colors. For example, the English language has a word for light red. That word is pink. The English language does not have a comparable, comparable word for light blue. And because of that, we have all these cultural associations with the idea of pink, even though in other languages that concept doesn't exist at all. The Expendable Man by Dorothy Hughes is something I just discovered recently, and I think it's this masterpiece of 1940s thrillers that I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed to have only just learned about. Um, I found her when I was looking through kind of 40s and 50s thrillers um, as inspiration for my own work, and I found this recommendation of Dorothy Hughes's work from the great mystery novelist Walter Mosley, and he wrote that Dorothy Hughes was kind of not as well known in her time, but absolutely the equal of a contemporary like Patricia Highsmith. I've always loved Patricia Highsmith, so I said, oh, who is this person? Um, who's Dorothy Hughes? I have to read all of her books, which I have been systematically doing, and it's amazing. Something I found really inspiring about this is that Dorothy Hughes's books were not huge bestsellers at the time, um, and yet they're starting to experience this bit of a resurgence. And I think there's something so beautiful about novels that way, that 60 years later, 80 years later, 100 years later, one's work can still find ever new audiences. The last book I want to recommend is called The Big Goodbye by Sam Wasson. Um, this is a recent history of the making of the film Chinatown. And I think I love this so much because I'm always interested in how other writers, other artists work. I always feel like my own system for writing, system for outlining stories, for telling stories is so brutally inefficient and that I never get anything done and I'm never doing as much as I want to and I've organized my days poorly and I've organized my research materials poorly and I keep going through the work of other writers, great writers, great storytellers to sort of find some better way of doing it. I keep hoping there'll be some better way of organizing things. And, and something that Sam Wasson's able to do in this book about the making of the film Chinatown is take us through draft by draft through this screenplay. I found this so inspiring to sort of see outlines of early drafts, which bear no resemblance to the finished film, which show there's drafts that are way too long, there's drafts that are way too short, there's drafts that tell wildly different stories. And I find something, as a professional writer, I find something so comforting in the idea that no one quite has it figured out yet, and we're all just doing our best. And after you've read all those, but only after, um, check out my new book, The Holdout. Uh, the Holdout is a thriller set in Los Angeles about a criminal defense attorney who 10 years ago was on a jury in a high profile murder trial. Now, 10 years later, she is reunited with all the other jurors for a docu-series about the case. Did they make the right decision? Did they make the wrong decision? But at this reunion, one of the other jurors is murdered and our defense attorney finds herself the prime suspect. So I hope you enjoy.